This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 119. Today, Bita and I are going to be deep diving into a single ingredient, oranges. Portugal, as you pronounce it in Farsi. We're going to talk about the different forms that orange can take in Persian cuisine, some recipes, some of our favorite ways to use and eat oranges. And we have a fun Ask the Beats at the end of the show. Hi, Pita June. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. So oranges, such a like unassuming ingredient, so much more than just a fruit, huh? Yeah, never really appreciated oranges until we planted an orange tree. And I realized that winter, at least in California, is the time that this tree just becomes plentiful with these big, beautiful oranges. But beyond the fact that they're growing on the tree in my backyard, I love that they're a part of Persian cuisine, savory and sweet, and that we use all parts of the orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's so beautiful that like nature you know, produces this beautiful fruit. It's like wintertime. A lot of people have colds. And here it is, this bright orange, beautiful fruit, plentiful in the winter, full of vitamin C. So good for you. Uh, It's just really beautiful how nature kind of works that way. You know, when we talk about like Persian culture, like fruit in general is like a big part. You know, you have a bowl of fruit pretty much at every occasion. Anytime you have guests in your home, you always have fruit. Some people like will not entertain without a big bowl of fruit overflowing with seasonal fruit. There are some Persian cucumbers in there. Top it off with some beautiful grapes. There's always fresh fruit, it feels like, at Persian events and in Persian people's homes. It's great that you started with the the whole fresh fruit, you know, to start with the most basic form. I have a huge wooden bowl at work and we filled it with cuties. Mm -hmm. And we are fortunate that we have a well-stocked work fridge with snacks and drinks, but I love it that we have fresh fruit. I see people grab it, it's just so easy to eat, especially the mandarins that we call cuties sometimes. They're super easy to peel. I love the smell of citrus. So anytime someone's having one, it just smells so fresh and bright and- yes healthy and loaded with the vitamin C that we all need to fight the viruses in the winter. So so there's a Choresh that we're just starting to learn about. Yeah, Choresh de Portugal. (laughs) I love it. I've actually never made it myself, but I've seen a few different recipes for it. And typically, it's paired with carrots and cinnamon and cooked with onions. And it looks like a lot of times with chicken. I've seen different versions that have barberries in it as well. And they kind of all simmer together with orange zest in the choresh and also garnished on the top. There's orange juice that makes part of the choresh and also orange segments. So this is like a quintessential dish that showcases really all the different parts of the orange. So it's beautiful, served on top of a steamy platter of white rice, beautiful Persian basmati rice. So it sounds delicious. I've never made it, but I think I want to try it. It looks very simple to make. Yeah, I think it's hard to imagine, but it's just so interesting to take a fruit that's both sweet and zesty Mm -hmm. and put it in a savory dish. And, you know, when they pair it with carrot, it just adds not only a little bit more sweet, but also more of the color. And so I think there's a lot of dishes in Persian cuisine where oranges and carrots are used together. Yeah, that's right. Some versions of like shirin polo incorporate some carrots, sometimes some barberries. You want to talk about shirin polo? Yeah. Shirin polo is one of my favorite sweet, savory dishes. It's a beautiful dish that is most commonly seen at weddings. There are different terms for it. Jeweled rice. How do you say jeweled rice in the Persian language? So there's like the morase polo. It has barberries and the orange zest peel, basically candied 
peel. It can have carrots. It can have pistachios and almonds. And really just like a beautiful display of different colors really looks like jewels on top of the rice. Yes. Majestic is what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has all the dried fruits and nuts, plus the aromatics. It has orange blossom water, sometimes a little bit of rose water, if you please. And it's majestic because of the colors. I think there's another word that's on the tip of my tongue, Java hair. Java hair. Yes. Java hair is, means jeweled. Yeah. Yeah. Jewel dress. Yes, absolutely. So pretty. So the zest and the peel, you know, as it's like kind of candied, it plays a big role in it. It has like a distinct flavor. You, I think you really need that in shirin polo. The zest also can be used to make jam or marmalade. We see that all the time, like a Seville orange or other orange, moraboye, different morabo that showcases that. In my very early days of my blog, Beats Eats, and part of like inspiration during that time I lived in New York, I had a small little studio there. And in the little kitchen, I made the moraboye pusin orange. And one thing to note about that is that it can be pretty bitter. So you have to actually, when you cook that, you have to actually boil the orange peels and then drain the liquid. And you actually have to do that like at least three different times to really get the bitterness out of it if you're going to be making a morapa or a jam. So I have fond memories looking back at that and in my little New York kitchen making my morapa for the first time. I love that. That's great to think back to those times and you could do it even in your little small kitchen. Mm -hmm. My early memories are with making the shirin polo with the orange zest and carrots and so on. And yes, back when I used to first make it, I would do the same and I would try to take the pith off of the orange peel. So it's just sort of like uh -huh. use a paring knife and the pith is the white part of the peel. So to try to take that off to also help to cut on the bitter flavor. Yes. Nowadays, I either order or pick up from a Persian market the peel that's dried. I do also still try to do the boiling, but I take shortcuts. I buy the peel and I use my electric water boiler and yeah. I take shortcuts that way. But absolutely, naturally, you probably want to have fresh orange peel for the jam, I would guess. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many great varieties of ready-made jams and marmalades and marapa that you can get not only from a Persian market, but from any grocery store will really have that too. And I actually use the jarred orange marmalade a lot in my cooking. So if I make like a shirin polo, I will use like the cheat of just using the morabba and mixing it with like carrots and like the other ingredients as like a really easy shortcut. So if you're looking for a shortcut, those are really great ones to use. Yeah, I recall you sometimes even will use it on your tachin. Is that right? Yes, I totally do. My, my jewel tachin. I love using that. It's just such an easy ingredient. It adds a layer of flavor and just makes it something really different. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. You can use the orange peel and also desserts too in different cakes. You have a cake recipe that we talked about the other day in the Persian holiday desserts episode. That tea cake sounded delicious that you used that in. And yeah, there's lots of different versions of cakes that you can use the orange peel in as well. Yeah. And orange blossom water. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about orange blossom water. I don't have a ton of experience using it. So teach me <laughs> what I need to know. Well, all I can tell you is that I can pick it up at a Persian market, a Middle Eastern market, order it online. It's an aromatic water, similar to rose water, but with the orange flair. Have you ever used it before? I haven't really used it, and I actually don't have any. <laughs> yeah, so I think you'd love it. I will gift you some. I use it in the orange cardamom tea cake. I use it in shirin polo. Those are the two primary recipes that I use orange blossom water in. But we have played with using it in things like oatmeal and chia pudding. Mm. Yeah. So if you like the essence of citrus and orange, I think you can play around with it and add it to just about anything. I have a granola from the market that has orange flavor that I sprinkle on top of my breakfast and it's really good. I, I love anything with, with orange flavor. Does it have like a strong orange flavor to it? Because I do love the flavor of orange. It's hard to describe the aromatic of it. I would describe it as almost floral. So if you have ever had a citrus tree, 
there are little white flowers that blossom before the fruit that are really fragrant. Yes. And that is what the orange blossom water tastes like. I mean, I, that must be where they make it from. Okay. Yeah. I definitely have to experiment with that. Yeah. This definitely has an orange floral essence to it. Mm -hmm. Really special. Yeah. And I can just imagine that scent, you know, you could just get near an orange tree, which is blossoming like that. And you can just like smell the aroma of it. So that sounds mm -hmm. like it smells so beautiful. My mom likes to collect the little blossoms and put them in a bowl of water and have them, you know, in the bathroom mm -hmm. or <laughs> it's like a natural candle or natural incense. That sounds great. Another form of orange that I think is pretty cool is, have you seen the dried orange slices mm -hmm. in the markets? They're so pretty. They're really pretty. And I like them. I like the taste. We eat all of it, you know, down to the rind. And they add color and interest to a charcuterie board yes. or, a, you know, Persian inspired cheese board. Mm -hmm. Good idea. I love putting them around the edge and just making it pretty and wintry, maybe with a sprig of rosemary yeah you can also dip those in chocolate too and have chocolate covered like oranges too which is one of like my favorites oh i love that flavor combo too you can do just about anything with them you can use them ornamentally mm -hmm. you know tie a little string through the orange dried orange and have them decorating your planter <laughs> your tree yeah or even like a little gift tag with a ribbon or something like that and have it as a little garnish on the your gift yeah so we have a fun ask the beats that was a call in we got an audio recording off of instagram so to start the year out here in our second episode yeah so fun i've been loving these call in ask the beats so if you are a listener and you have a question feel free to leave us a voice message send it to our instagram or to our email hello at modern persian food.com or you can also just write it out and send it to us and we'll read it on air too. Absolutely. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. All right. Here is this week's Ask the Beats. This is Amy Katz from Veggie Save the Day, and I have an Ask the Beats question. I really enjoy Persian food, but I'm vegan and gluten-free, and I'm not sure what to order when I visit Persian restaurants. I live in Orange County, California, and we have a lot of different choices when it comes to Persian food, but I'm just not confident going myself and ordering off the menu. Do you have any suggestions for me? Thanks, Bita and Bita. Fun. Thanks, Amy. Great question. Yeah, definitely a great question because I think that there are a lot of options in a Persian restaurant that fit your criteria of being vegan and going dairy free. I mean, like off the bat, like rice is like the main staple on the plate. It fits both of those criteria. I mean, you might want to like just check with the restaurant if they're using butter when they're preparing the rice. But I think that you can definitely just check with them so that maybe they can emit any butter if they potentially use it. But I would say off the bat, like rice for sure. And a bunch of different appetizers can do it. First of all, the soups too. Typically the soups will not have any gluten in them or have any dairy in them. I mean, if you get like a ashirish there, yes, that will have the noodles in it. But besides that, there are plenty of other soups, asha anar, asha adas, that don't have any gluten in it. A lot of the stews, you can get that without meat. Like right off the bat, like khorsha badim jun, the eggplant stew. And a lot of the eggplant dishes won't have gluten or dairy in it. You know, there is an ingredient called kashk, which is made from yogurt. So that may be a garnish in some of in some of the dishes, which you can always ask that not to be included. And that would typically be like more in like an appetizer. And it's usually typically called out if there is kashk in it. But like the different khoresh, I think, can meet that criteria. At the end of the day, there are a lot of options that are both gluten-free and vegetarian in Persian restaurants and vegan. I would recommend veggie skewers. They're really delicious. They're little shish kebab skewers of bell pepper, onion, tomato. Some restaurants will have more vegetable options like mushrooms. As you mentioned, rice. The shirin pillow we just talked about in this episode. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and ask the question about the butter, but that should be good to go. Also like a adas polo, like the different rice dishes, the mixed layered rice dishes. I think a lot of those will fit that criteria. Absolutely. The fava bean, the sabzi polo, which is our herb rice. And you mentioned appetizers. So we have lots of great appetizers, salad shirazi, 
We have the eggplant appetizers. So definitely come by the Persian restaurant. Just mention most restaurants will be able to accommodate for you. Enjoy the food and keep those questions coming. Great. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.